Hello guys, welcome back down here. You liked the last video so much. Let me see if I can replicate the success. Uh, I'm here nice and early as ever. Let's see what we can find today. So my first find was this bone. It's got some age to it. It's very dark. So the leg bone there, I think. And then I spotted down here an old favorite. There we go. Bit of lead type. And I keep saying I'm going to print these, and then I forget to show you. So this time I will print it. Looks like a C from here or a G. I'm looking through the lens. I don't quite see. But there we go. Good sign. Little metal patch around. Down here, I spy a button. Let's see if it's got anything on it. 19th century fly button. With any luck? Oh, it has, I think. Or has it? Ah, oh, no, it's just a generic one. It's just a generic one. It says... Plus... NE Ultra Plus. Hmm. Sweet little find. Love to find a button. Strange. Numbered brick. Or stone, rather. Numbered piece of stone. Okay. Not sure why. I've got a spot to find for you. Here we go. I'm sure you can see it. It's the old classic blue and white. That's quite a pretty little piece there with that butterfly. It almost looks like a contemporary tattoo. A contemporary vintage tattoo, if you know the kind I mean. A sailor's tattoo. That's cute. Here we are, another spot the find of the same kind. There we go, classic willow pattern. You can see that little mark there. I always think they look like nuclear detonator warnings. There we go, nice piece of the willow pattern. And then down here, that's a bit of red wool. There we go, that looks like Hmm, rim of a pot perhaps, or is that a handle? Anyway, nice piece of redware there. Leave that one behind. And I'll leave the willow pattern behind as well. Here's a nice little unexpected piece of tea glazed delftware. Looks like a tiny bit dullware, but actually it's a beautiful cobalt glaze and white on there. Um, that's lovely. And yes, it's glazed on both sides. That's very pretty. I'll take that one home. And there we go, another tiny piece of delftware. How sweet. A bit brighter than the last one. It still has that lovely biscuity fabric there. It's so uniquely delftware. And look at that, it is like an iced biscuit. Sweet will come home with me. Okay, I've just spied this down here. It's hefty and I know you can see it. Do you know what's interesting about it? Of course you do. Look at that. So this large bone piece here, I guess, I know, a bit of a leg bone, there's a socket, has been worked. So someone has cut this piece out here, perhaps, oh, they've cut it off there too. Maybe they were gonna make a core or something, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna give that uh, a bit of a look at home. 
research it a bit and see what I can find out. But there, that you can see where someone has worked this. They have cut and filed. That is a beautiful piece of worked bone. I'm really pleased with that. It's a blue and white day and a bone day obviously. That is such an appealing little shape. So river tumbled. But the way it's just caught these little details of a bird and some kind of flower or plant there. Very, very pretty. I will be keeping that. I know you love it as much as I do. Hot as marks in pottery. This looks like a tile that's been left out to dry in the sun. And on the back here, you've got some marks of where a potter has worked it with a tool, or perhaps their hands. I think perhaps their hands. Look at that. Turn it in the light so you can see it better. fingers or a tool, but there you go. Whoever made this hundreds of years ago has left their mark in it. Amazing stuff. And here we go. True blue Tudor green. This is Tudor green. Thin, white, speckled, sparing, glaze on there. Thin, all the signs of Tudor green. And there is a nice piece of Westerwald jug handle. You can see a tiny dot of blue there, that's cobalt blue glaze splashed on there. Well guys, I guess it's a bit of a pottery and bone day today. I found this pretty piece. Let's have a look. There we go. Grecian. Oh. So a shipping scene. They look like Peter boats or smacks. Nice little bit of flower detail around the edge there. That's really pretty. Well, let's find out some more about that. And sometimes in these drifts of lighter stuff, you find light bulbs. There we go, it's an early one. Take that home, I'll see if there's anything in it, as we always do. And that has got this mill decoration at the top here. Very pretty. And another one. Okay, what is this to do with maybe some art thing? Probably, that's my guess. There's a nice piece of glass. Look at that. Pretty, let me get behind. What about this bone? No markings, okay, fine, well, I've got one. And what about this? Nice piece of glazed redware, possibly a chamber pot or something like that, a little vessel, 1500 to 1800. There we go, I'll leave that for someone else. Okay, I'm showing you this because I think it's quite fun. Have a look at these. They look like macaroni noodles. Obviously, they're all pipe stems sticking in the ground. It's probably just little pieces there. But it's quite fun how they're just they're embedded into the ground like that. I might leave that little one in there. Oh no, hang on. Here we go. There. 
tiny stems embedded in like worms. What on earth is that? Interesting item. There we go. And there's the other piece. Oh, well, that's a funny thing. You know, we find those loopy twist things. They're fasteners, cloak fasteners, or whatever people think they are. It could be pin twists. Anyway, here we go. There's another doubly, a doubly pin twist or a doubly fastener. Anyway, cute. Honestly guys, I cannot resist. Look at these, likely just butch remarks actually. Well, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe they were, again, making something as big bit chopped out of there. I don't know, I love these animal parts that have been hacked. Um, yes, what does that say about me? Well, anyway, I'm taking it home. There. Sometimes you get bits of delftware that turn up like London buses, none for ages, and then two at once. There, more lovely blue and white. You can see the real maker's marks in that where they've um, applied the decoration. I think something, maybe a little supply of delftware has washed out here recently and um, now we're reaping the tiny rewards. Very sweet though, I'm going to turn a bit of dog bread down. You see, this is what I'm talking about. Here we go. There, that's the base. Perhaps of a Delftware Alborello or a big apothecary jar, some kind of thing. I'll show you exactly what they would have looked like because I've just been spending quite a lot of time at the Worshipful Society of Apothecaries. So, there you go. I found the reason I think this is an Alboreto or, or a drug jar is because it's quite heavy duty, but I found just over there and didn't show you, alas, a tiny piece of spout. I have some of that at home already. It was plain on decorated, so I didn't show you, but I think that's what's happened here. <laughs> a load of delftware was washed out. And they're, all, they're not all the same item, so lots of bits of pipe around today as well. Um, but that's interesting. It's been a while since I've had a real pottery day, so I'm pleased with that. And there we go. You probably can't hear me because it's really windy, but there is a handle from some kind of cooking vessel, perhaps a pipkin, and that dates from around 1500 to 1800. Okay guys, since we're on bones, <laughs> How about this? I mean, am I going to? I think I'm going to. Oh, I think I'm an idiot, but I think I'm going to. Yes, I know Gabrielle, you like it when I do this. Yes, I'm going to take it. Oh, what an idiot. That's a nice little piece there. Hand painted, I think. Cute. Here's another pretty piece. Let's see if we can work it out. Okay. Oh, that's going to be a tricky one. Probably from a pub or a hotel around here somewhere. Cool. Oh, that's a bit of a challenge. I'm going to see if I can work it out. Okay, look, it's not going to have much age on it, but I absolutely love this. So, yes. That's definitely coming home with me. Even if it doesn't have much age, I love it. It can go with my working Thames items. And I'm afraid, right next to it, I've got this brick and I'm gonna have to take it. It's gonna be an addition to my garden. Uh, LFB, 
WKS, Louisville. Hmm, nice one, I'm pleased with that. Now, here we go, you know where I like this, don't you? Because this is American. Louisville, Kentucky. It's a brick from Kentucky for all my American friends out there. And I'm really excited about this brick because we hardly ever find foreign bricks, especially American bricks on the foreshore. I've actually contacted the brickworks in Louisville to see if they can shed any light on what this brick may have been imported for. Also, I've sent this brick to David Kitching, who runs the wonderful Brocross website to see if we can get this brick listed on their archive. Super pleased with this. And right next to it, right next to it, a little person in a boat. Sweet piece of willow. All right, let's do a big round up of all the pottery I just picked up. So, we've got some glazed redware. We've got a bit of stoneware sagar here. Now, I'm definitely taking that home. You know how much I love that stuff. That is for use in kilns to fire other vessels inside. There probably some seed, but no, I think that's just salt glaze stoneware, salt glaze stoneware. And then we've got some hand painted blue and white. Now, what I'm going to see here, there we go. There, a bit of slip combed statue slip firmware. There's a funny old drift here with loads of salt glaze and other bits. And then look at this guy. <laughs> What are you? Oh, well, you know what? I don't normally take funnies home, but I'm gonna take this funny home because that's cute. Maybe I'll even gift it to someone I know who collects Strange Little Thames toys. I think you know who I mean. Ah, <laughs> oh, look who it is. It's the very end of the beard of a good and wild man at Bartman. Shame, just his little beard there. Alright, here we go. A nice little piece of shrapnel. Classic piece of shrapnel there. See where it's taking a knock. And, looking just to my right, another piece of stoneware. And that looks like a piece of sagar again. I cannot resist this stuff, it's ridiculous. So what am I taking home? A giant bone, bits of <laughs> film furniture, bits of shrapnel. Well, mum and dad, you must be proud. Cool. I've got this absurd rule, but uh, if I find a really rocking piece of sagar, I can't believe it, and this is rocking. And I think mainly it applies to uh, stoneware sagar because that to me looks like a piece of delta sagar. Not so interested in that, but this base absolutely. Let's have a look. Oh, it's big enough. Right. Take this out of here. The least damage possible. Okay, yeah, it's a saga base, but it's got some nice little features in there, marks from firing. Yep, that's coming home with my other pieces for my collection. And I just noticed here, look, so it is a thing lots of us in the last do. Someone has left these two pieces here for someone else to find. I'm going to do the same, but... I'm just going to take note of that really delicate hand-painted decoration there and this fine decoration here. And then I'll leave them there for someone else to find and I'll take my chunky old piece of sago.
Now I've just stopped to show you this because it's like 18th century storage jar but I love that pearlescent kind of look on it there. That's an interesting bit actually. What? Hang on, I'm confused. But maybe I'm going to take that after all. What is that shape? And there, and there. Okay, yes, I'm taking it. Oh dear. Some birds on there. Flowers, keeping that one. Good chunk. Transfer wear. I just picked up this little piece of tin glazed handle, it looks like. Maybe the handle for a porringer. I know you can't see really what it is right now, but I've put up a comparison piece because it's quite sweet. So in contrast to my very big chunky piece of bone, oh hello, oh, who are you? <laughs> hello, 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 hi. So I've found a great big bone processing spot. It's got all of these, well I say bone processing spot, but it's done with all these processed bone items in. And they are so interesting. So I'm just gonna have a little look around here and see what I can find. I don't wanna dig, just wanna see what's on the surface. Um, yeah, see what I can rescue, because I love this stuff. And all of these bone veneers represent animals who have been processed and um, their bones have gone for a secondary use so anyway let's see what I can do with this lot I might just be slightly uh, losing the plot as I so often am okay found all these off cuts that have been through a tannery so taking this lot home I'm gonna see what I can do with it so I've rescued some bits and bobs and then I found this very odd glass so if I get this cleaned up and have a look at home maybe just walk from fire glass from being in a fire I was so intrigued about this strange glass object that I contacted Andy McConnell who is a renowned glass expert Andy also didn't know what to make of it, so we're just going to have to put it down to some glass that's been melted in a really high fire. Andy suggested perhaps fire from a foundry. And in fact, in this area, there were at one point foundries and glass works. So it's just a strange looking glass shape, but I love it. All right, guys, well, that is me done for another week. I don't know if you can hear me because the wind is blasting. I have picked up the absolutely the most ridiculous things to take home today. Bones, very big bones, uh, a load of bone off cuts, and uh, yeah, some other bits and bobs. So it wasn't a bumper edition with coins and tokens and that kind of thing, but we can feed our curiosity. So I hope you enjoyed everything this week and I'll see you again soon for some mudlarking with Old Father Tim's.